And I raised three little boys, which I understand you've been acting like. Sounds like she can handle it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the most notable and memorable celebrity guest stars on Young Sheldon. I am telling you, your boy's got a future in the tire business. Goodyear, Firestone, somebody's gonna scoop him up first round. Number 20, Paul Fusco as Alf. Depending on your age, you may or may not even know who Alf is. Dear Alf, I'm your number one fan. I like you because you're an alien, but you're funny. Unlike my brother who's an alien, but just a jerk. ALF, or Alien Life Form, as the acronym stood for, was an alien character from a late 1980s TV show of the same name. Living with a human family, ALF was perhaps the most extreme version of a fish-out-of-water story ever told. Take a look at me and tell me what you see. Just another pretty face. Puppeteered by creator Paul Fusco, he appeared in a season two episode of Young Sheldon after Missy sends him a letter confessing her adoration for the Melmachian. P.S. My favorite color is pink. What's yours? <laughs> what a cutie pie. Hey, hey, Barbara, we got any more of those pink t-shirts with my face on them? Though the character has occasionally appeared in other media since his show went off the air, this was a welcome surprise. Oh, oh, and get me some chicken nuggets, huh? Hello? Anybody out there? Apparently not. Number 19, David Hasselhoff as himself. For 80s kids, he was Michael Knight and drove the coolest car in the world. If you were around in the 90s, you probably knew him as Mitch Buchanan, always running with his colleagues along the beaches of California. But David Hasselhoff's resume also includes a cameo as himself in Young Sheldon. During a season four episode, Georgie wants to put out an exercise video and gets the drama teacher Mr. Lundy to help him. The two part ways after a dispute, and Lundy seeks assistance from a much more prominent face in television, the Hoff. Well, I've conquered television, music. I don't see why I couldn't add exercise videos to my empire. So you'll do it. You got the off. The tail end of the episode treats viewers to cowboy aerobics featuring the man himself. It's definitely something. Who's ready to rustle up some muscles? <laughs> Let's saddle up and ride. Number 18, Will Sasso as Jim McAllister. Hey, nice to meet y'all. Okay. If you ever watched Mad TV during its heyday, you undoubtedly caught the talents of Will Sasso. A hilarious comedian and actor, Sasso appeared in five seasons as a regular and multiple other times as a guest star. He's also popped up on shows like How I Met Your Mother, Modern Family, and countless others. Really? What do you do? I own the tire shop. Sasso added a slightly more reserved character to his repertoire when he popped up on young Sheldon as Mandy's father, Jim. So you're gonna marry my daughter? Well, if she'd stop saying no. Well, that's something. Jim? As the owner of a local tire shop, he certainly makes an impression each time he's on screen. We wonder if he has anything to do with how Georgie ends up becoming the tire doctor. I'm sure your wife will come around eventually. Well, I'm hoping when she sees the baby, that ice cube in her chest might start to melt. Number 17, Michael Truco as Dusty. Well, hello. Huh. Dusty. That's not a name, that's a poorly kept house. <laughs> the Big Bang Theory may have featured a lot of geek culture, whereas young Sheldon has tended to lean less on the nerd and more on the family aspects of Sheldon's life. As a result, some viewers might not have recognized Michael Truco when he appeared in Mary's Fantasies. I haven't seen you here before. Well, I'm just passing through. Tonight I'm here, tomorrow who knows. Sci-fi fans, however, would recognize Truco immediately from his time on the 2004 Battlestar Galactica series. He also shares a special connection to the show's predecessor, having appeared as a guest star on it as well. What do you have in mind? I don't know. I was thinking maybe we take a walk. You could tell me more about your hopes and dreams. Anyone remember Leonard's bromance with Dr. David Underhill? He's the reason Penny bought Leonard motorcycle lessons. Your feelings are valid. I don't know. Number 16, Wendy Malick as President Hagemeyer. What do shows like Just Shoot Me, Star Trek Lower Decks, 
Hot in Cleveland, and Bubble Guppies all have in common? They all featured the talents of American actress Wendy Malick. She'll be gone by the end of the day. Ray, just make it look like an accident. No, no. Having got her big break on Dream On and the aforementioned Just Shoot Me, she has been delighting audiences with her talents ever since. I came here to make this school the Harvard of East Texas. Not the... What, what's your least favorite school? MIT. For poor Sheldon Cooper, Malik has appeared several times as Linda Hagemeyer. As the president of the college Sheldon is attending, she's tasked with keeping him happy enough so he'll stick around, while simultaneously doing anything she can to get under his skin. It's as fun as it sounds. Okay, now get out of here. You have a lot of work to do. Yes, ma'am. It makes me thirsty. Number 15, Melanie Linsky as Professor Dora Erickson. Melanie Linsky is one of those stars who has an undeniable talent, and she's impressed us on countless occasions. Why didn't I just say something a year and a half ago? Don't think about the past. Let's just think about from today on. Many people will remember her as Rose, the woman who had an unhealthy obsession with Charlie on Two and a Half Men. There's also her more recent work as Shauna on the acclaimed Yellow Jackets. And the rest of us starved and scavenged and prayed for 19 months till they finally found us. And that's the end of the story. Clearly, her resume boasts countless stage, film, and television appearances, and we never tire of watching her. How come you didn't want to get out of bed this morning? If I can't know what's real, what's the point? You have the right words. You're just saying them wrong. Her appearance on Young Sheldon further emphasizes her abilities, as she portrayed a philosophy teacher who causes the title character to question the very nature of his life and everything in it. I don't understand. Asking these questions is exciting. It's what gets me out of bed. That's interesting. That's no small task, yet she makes it look effortless. Thank you. I am happy to help. Dr. Linkletter, I'm dropping your class and switching my major to philosophy. Uh, what? Number 14, Ming-Na Wen as Dr. Carol Lee. Suggest we mount a radio telescope on the roof so that we could get a good read on the fluctuations in radiation. Excellent. She battled foes and made hard choices as Melinda May during her time on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's our way to war, so if you're gonna do this, you need to win. You suggesting I can't win? I'm not saying you can't but I know I can. Meanwhile, in the Star Wars universe, she became Boba Fett's partner after initially being known as a famed assassin. She's also been the voice of countless characters, including Disney's iconic Princess Mulan. So after taking all of that on, who else could she possibly have to take on? The answer is, of course, Sheldon Cooper. Gentlemen, I'm Dr. Carol Lee, director of the new Experimental Cosmology Center. What makes you qualified to lead our project? Yeah, yeah. Well, I have a PhD in physics from Berkeley. The university president calls her in to settle a dispute between Dr. Linkletter and Dr. Sturgis. Sheldon is caught in the middle as Wen's character, Dr. Carol Lee, helps calm the waters. You want a trick? Go see David Copperfield. How about I make you disappear? Do I need to separate you? Or can we try to put our minds together for the advancement of science? Number 13, McKenna Grace as Paige Swanson. McKenna Grace has been popping up on Young Sheldon ever since season two. And I'm the youngest person in this class. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> as Paige Swanson, she has been a worthy adversary turned friend of Sheldon's as the show has progressed. Do you ever wish you were just like everyone else? Not at all. <laughs> Me neither. I love being smarter than everyone. <laughs> Me too. In one of the sitcom's most powerful moments, we see Paige's struggle with her parents' divorce come out in literal tears, all thanks to this young actress. I have to live in two separate houses, and my grandma says the meanest things about my dad. I know that everyone is upset that I'm not doing well in school. It's just hard to care. Given her incredible gifts, it's no wonder we've been seeing more of her on film and television. Ghostbusters Afterlife, The Bad Seed movies, and Fuller House are just a few in what's becoming an impressive list of credits. Really, I just feel alone.
That sounds hard. Number 12. Billy Gardell as Herschel Sparks Throughout the run of The Big Bang Theory, we often heard Sheldon refer to his neighbor Billy Sparks, who tormented him. Will Wheaton currently ranks sixth on my all-time enemies list, right between director Joel Schumacher, who nearly destroyed the Batman movie franchise, <laughs> and Billy Sparks, who lived down the street from me and put dog poop on the handles of my bicycle. When the spin-off prequel finally surfaced, we learned that perhaps older Sheldon didn't remember things as well as he'd like to think. Hey! Hey, Billy. Is this fence window always here? No, son, that's a new fence window. Billy, albeit a bit clueless, seems like a decent kid. Perhaps part of that is due to his upbringing, courtesy of his father, mechanic and garage owner Herschel. Played by Mike and Molly comedian Billy Gardell, Herschel is one of the sitcom's best recurring characters. Though it's a more understated role on the whole, Gardell is fully able to flex his chops and deliver at every turn. But yours? He doesn't need any tricks. He knows where the puncture holes are. He knows. He knows. Number 11. Cindy Lauper as herself While fans loved seeing older Sheldon Cooper have one too many on The Big Bang Theory, a similar scene could never happen on young Sheldon. Or could it? Turns out, it sort of could. How can I unify the four fundamental forces of the universe? Now we're talking. After getting to the verge of a major physics realization while unconscious, Sheldon is desperate to recreate the effects of anesthesia. He consumes a high-powered tea, and we find ourselves watching him hallucinate in his room. Okay, Grand Unified Field Theory. Here I come. Among the posters on the wall, we hear the iconic Cindy Lauper educate Captain Proton on Gotthold Ephraim Lessing. Who's, who's got whole lessing? He's an 18th century German philosopher. Now, do you mind? We girls are trying to have some fun over here. Apologies. Sorry, Cindy Lauper. Our bad. Did we ever expect to hear the girls just want to have fun singer bring a poster of herself to life? No, but we're very glad it happened. It's pretty funny stuff. Number 10, Steve Burns as Nathan. Even if this name doesn't ring a bell, you might still recognize Steve Burns as Steve from the Nickelodeon kids show Blue's Clues. Who's your friend? Oh, he's not a friend, he's a stranger. I met him on a Star Trek bulletin board. On Young Sheldon, Burns plays Nathan, a middle-aged comic book nerd the title character becomes friends with. And someone Sheldon's Mima certainly doesn't appreciate her grandson being around at first. Hello, I'm Nathan. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave, Nathan. Okay, but I'm taking my tape with me. That's fine. No, I need to see the end. No, you don't. Nathan ends up being a good casual friend for Sheldon, though he may be too old to be hanging out with a kid. Playing Nathan isn't the only contribution Burns has made to young Sheldon, as he's also supplied the show's theme song, Mighty Little Man. Well, he's dressed as Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. Oh, I've never seen it. Yeah, well, you're not missing much. It was a lame kid show. I'm sorry, lame kid show? For your information, Star Trek wouldn't exist without Lost in Space. Ooh. Number 9. Dave Foley as Gary O'Brien This The Kids in the Hall member has appeared in a few episodes playing an obnoxiously wealthy businessman named Gary O'Brien. My ultimate goal is to one day devise the grand unified field theory. Uh. You're one of those, are you? The university Sheldon attends initially wants him to dine with O'Brien in hopes that the businessman will cut the university a big check after meeting the prodigy. Well, Kirk Girdle's incompleteness theorems eliminate the possibility of a unified theory. You honestly believe that? However, our protagonist, not feeling that Mr. O'Brien is his intellectual equal, tells him off in blunt, Sheldon-esque fashion. Tell me more about how Einstein's life goal was nothing but folly. Foley has since returned in the role, with the character becoming even more eccentric. It's great to watch Sheldon being forced to put up with O'Brien's absurdity. I smiled and nodded like my Meemaw's Houston Oilers bobblehead. And I also discovered a way that we could predict the masses of all the known particles using the Egyptian pyramids. Number 8. Pen and Teller as Acne Vulgaris and Pus This is just a pimple. 
how can you be sure it isn't chicken pox or smallpox or monkeypox? When Sheldon develops a pimple, the comedic duo appear, Penn as a personified version of acne, and Teller as his partner Puss. Not benzoyl peroxide! I'm melting! I'm melting! Give me a break. Together, they break down the significance and implications of Sheldon's situation as Penn discusses the details in a lively manner while Teller sits quietly and plays off him. But like a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly, things need to get a little weird along the way. How could people not like us? According to TV Line, series co-creator Stephen Malero and the team thought Penn Gillette would be perfect when deciding who to bring on as the zit. Watching the star's over-the-top delivery that manages to be both obnoxious and charismatic, we would have to say this casting decision was the right call. That was awesome! And Puss is available for children's parties. Number 7. Lance Reddick as Professor Boucher the late actor manages to be both intimidating and hilarious as Sheldon's engineering professor, an armed services veteran who runs his class with discipline. I'm aware that the class is now starting at 0901. Is it all right with you if I begin? At first, Sheldon appreciates this strict teaching style. Ooh, can I be number one? That's what Captain Picard calls Commander Riker on Star Trek Next Generation. You need to listen more and talk less. But that also changes once it forces him to struggle with a difficult assignment. Sheldon rarely meets his match, so it's nice to see Reddick's character put him in his place without breaking a sweat. Well, to start, this bridge is in pieces. What do you mean? It's a long-running gag in the Big Bang Theory that Sheldon had disdain for engineers, and Reddick's fantastic appearance helps explain the reason why that is. When he realized it was locked, his face fell into shock and disbelief. <laughs> nice. Show me. Do the face. <laughs> Number 6. Reba McIntyre as June In the third season, this country music superstar made her debut on the show as June, a hairdresser and friend of Sheldon's Mima Connie. That one's <laughs> mine over there, Evan. Oh, isn't that the coach's grandson? With a successful acting career, which included her own popular sitcom, McIntyre and her folksy Southern energy are a natural fit for young Sheldon and its Texas setting. Well, did he tell you that I was naked when he locked me out? No. Why did he do that? Because I was trying to hit him with a golf club. With her charming, bubbly personality on the show and in real life, Reba is always a delight to see whenever she stops by. I got three bananas and it asked me if I wanted to parlay and I said, well, that sounds like fun. So I hit that button and I went, woohoo, because I won. Unfortunately, she doesn't bring her singing talent with her, as her character can't carry a tune in a bucket. That is what we are. No one in between. How can we be wrong? Away with me. Number 5. Jason Alexander as Gene Lundy The comedy veteran plays Gene Lundy, an oddball drama teacher at Sheldon's high school. I checked out a book on acting, so I should have the hang of it by then. Well, I like that confidence. Passionate about his craft, Mr. Lundy is up to play any role available, whether it's the Dark Lord Satan or Little Orphan Annie. Pleased to meet you. I go by many names. Satan. And he's not afraid to ham up his performance for the crowds, either. Sun will come out tomorrow, bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. In later episodes, the character participates in business hustles such as creating an exercise tape and pushing a cosmetics pyramid scheme. Leave it to the man who played George Costanza on Seinfeld to give life to a character so shameless. You kind of left out how greed is the root of all evil and how it corrupts the soul. It's in there, it's called subtext. Number four, Bob Newhart as Arthur Jeffries, also known as Professor Proton. Newhart reprises his unforgettable role as Arthur Jeffries from The Big Bang Theory, for which he had won an Emmy. Professor Proton, it's an honor to meet you. Uh, just, just call me Arthur. In the pilot episode of Young Sheldon, we finally get to see Newhart play Professor Proton, the host of a science education show that Sheldon loved in his childhood. Can a clock be powered by an ordinary potato? 
I hope so, boys and girls. But this is going to be a really boring episode. And it isn't the character's only appearance either. Each time we see him, Newhart brings his classic straight-faced delivery to a man clearly living a life of quiet desperation. Your mother wants you to swim. George. Mom! Who's ready to suck eggs? This is one of the many callbacks that young Sheldon has made to the Big Bang Theory, serving as a nice treat for viewers and providing a connection to the original show. Today we're going to learn about Sir Isaac Newton. Hello, old friend. Number three, Ray Liotta as Vincent. Given the kind of tough guy, underworld roles Liotta typically played, young Sheldon might have been the last place someone would expect him to guest star. How you doing there, Connie? Hey, Vincent. <laughs> what brings you to Louisiana? Wait, don't tell me. You're here to see Tony Orlando. Afraid not. However, the Goodfellas actor was perfectly cast as Vincent, a shady bookie whom Connie runs into at a Louisiana casino. Connie, you're putting me in a very awkward position. I want a toaster oven playing Kino. You want it? I got one. I want my money. Leota infused the part with the perfect balance of humor and grit, making us laugh while still respecting his imposing presence as he tried to shake down Sheldon's Mima. Constance! Patience, Vincenzo. This appearance gave the late actor a chance to show a side of him audiences often didn't get to see in a lighthearted family sitcom, and it was great. Will you take a down payment in quarters? Do I have a choice? Number two, Elon Musk as himself. A few years after making appearances in shows like The Simpsons and The Big Bang Theory, Musk showed up in Young Sheldon's first season. For the first time, SpaceX has successfully landed its Falcon 9 rocket on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. In a flash forward toward the end of the sixth episode, Musk borrows ideas from a notebook that Sheldon worked on when he was young for his SpaceX company. It goes without saying, but getting a tech billionaire and one of the richest men in the world is a big boon for the show. While there's no denying Musk is a controversial figure, he's at least able to poke fun at himself with this cameo. Elon, the CNN reporter's here to talk to you. Hang on. Send him in. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mayim Bialik as Amy Farrah Fowler One great callback young Sheldon has made to The Big Bang Theory is having main cast members from the original show on as guest stars. Simon Halberg, for instance, has returned as Howard to notably talk about engineering. What else? Engineering has a rich and storied history dating back to ancient times. Some consider it the single most important field of study known to man, from the wheel to the International Space Station. Which I went to. Honestly, this again? Kaylee Cuoco, for her part, showed us what she could do as pool water. My pH level is 7.4, and with three parts per million of chlorine, I'm cleaner than your daddy's plate after Thanksgiving dinner. Wow, that's pretty clean. However, our favorite of these appearances has to be Mayim Bialik. She once again plays Amy Farrah Fowler, Sheldon's partner, as we hear her voice in the narration. I wanted his name to be Leonard Nimoy Cooper, but Amy wouldn't let me. Be happy I let you name him Leonard. Okay, okay. Love you. Love you too. Her feisty personality is a great contrast to his stubborn attitude, and we love getting tastes of it on young Sheldon just as much as we did on its predecessor. Money is a frequent source of conflict in a relationship. Thankfully, that's never been a problem for us. It says the woman who took away my comic book allowance. Uh, to start a college fund for our children. Comic books are an investment. Who's been your favorite guest actor on young Sheldon? Let us know in the comments. So now what? We just return to our ordinary lives. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.